right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined from the other side of the country in Frederick, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. by Nick Caruso. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, John? Yeah, fantastic too. And Nick is a standout uh, visionary entrepreneur and executive. Uh, he is the chief revenue officer at KnowledgeNet.ai uh, and has been instrumental in pioneering AI-driven sales automation processes. Uh, in, in addition to that work, you've also made impacts as an adjunct professor at Frederick Community College, and you're the co-founder of Illuminetto. Uh, and you started your career, which is interesting, as a captain in the United States Marine Corps. So thank you for your service. And so I have to say, I always have to say, anybody who has who I've worked with or has worked for me who was a who was in the Marines always been like some of the best people. I have to say, whatever the Marines do, they do something right. Well, I appreciate. Uh, that. I think it's more of the the mindset of the person that goes into the Marine Corps. Yeah, that could be it too. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is augmented intelligence revolutionizing sales processes at the top of the funnel. So um, I guess, Nick, a, a really easy place to start out uh, is everybody or thinks they understand what artificial intelligence is. And there's been a lot of tools come out and a lot of, and it's particularly in the sales arena, a lot of, there's been a lot of hype around AI, but uh, as, as I said, artificial intelligence well, we're talking about augmented intelligence and just def define the difference between the two. Yeah, so I, I came up with, I don't know if, if I stole the idea from somebody, um, but I came up with the concept of um, AI means augmented intelligence, not artificial. So we're not there to replace people. We're just there to make them more efficient, more effective. Um, right. So like, have you been using ChatGPT yourself as an example? Sure. So I think that's a classic case. Probably I, from my perspective, nothing that comes out of ChatGPT is something that you would just use right, right out of the gate. It's something that you want to augment your, your activities, uh, your output. And that's, that's really the theme of where I look at AI. Right. No, and I, I would agree with you. Um, I think that concept of like AI is going to take over everything and just sell for you and all that kind of stuff is, is, is nonsense personally be, I mean, maybe in, in transactional or B2C or whatever, but I think in complex B2B selling, I think you're right. I think it is more of, of, of an augmentation. And what are you seeing? What have you seen where it's really working well? It's particularly at the top of the funnel because that's where a lot of people struggle the most. And a lot of these tools, like promise the, the earth, but where are you seeing augmented intelligence really helping at the, at the top of the funnel? Yeah, so when, when, we, when we start looking at top of the funnel type activities, for me, that even starts at the, the marketing side. So mm -hmm. on the marketing side, um, when you start looking at a sales playbook as an example, um, and you start looking at your ideal customer profile, your personas and so forth, to do that right would take hun potentially hundreds of hours to do. Um, and I wonder how many organizations really go through the effort of creating a good playbook in that process. And so um, we use, within our own company, we use AI to um, help accelerate the development of a playbook and make that playbook a living document. So I think uh, like in marketing, I assume you've been through that exercise many times of creating ICPs and personas sure. and so forth, right? Um, and uh, even with your own company, with, with, with Pipeliner, um, I'm sure you have your, your persona that you go after and you're refining that. Um, but a lot of companies don't. They don't go through that process. So I, I looked at as that. That's the, that's the step one process. Um, and using generative AI for that, it can be exceptionally helpful. Yeah, I, I, you know, you're 100% correct. I think there's a lot of uh, organizations either think they have an ICP, think they've defined one, or kind of superficially define it and no, and don't revisit it enough. And I think that's probably where this is going to come into play even more so is because, you know, people often come up with their ICP and their ICP maybe changes and evolves over time, but they don't update things. So they're still kind of chasing after a broad target. I think this is going to help you to be able to evolve and, and adapt your ICP as you go. Yep. Yeah. No, you're right. So like even for yourself, you're probably on many, many conference calls throughout the day, right? You've got back to back calls. Sure. And are you using a service that's transcribing those calls? Yeah. So what we do is we use a service that transcribes the calls, but then we actually download those calls, the transcription. And then we bounce that transcription off of our ICP to constantly refine the ICP um, based upon that input. And uh, the results are absolutely ast astoundingly incredible. 
Um, mm -hmm. And if we had a, a marketing person doing that, it, we would need an entire marketing team just to do that before. Yeah. Um, what is what is um, what are some of the examples about what you have discovered by by this process? So it's um, much more on target um, identification of like elevator pitches, like how we should be improving the ele elevator pitch that we're giving, uh, the pain points that we're seeing from our customers, and then start to even um, uncover new ICPs or a better refinement for it. So when you're looking at ICPs before, it's usually a much bigger concept of um, like a high level person, mm -hmm. but the more refined you can get with much more on target, understanding the pain point of the customer, um, what's resonating with the customer. Um, these are all things that we are constantly enhancing in our ICP process. Yeah. And I think that's such a good, that's such a good use, as you said, because the problem is you could you could have a lot of marketing people doing this, but also you the problem is you have a lot of marketing people doing this, and they're not always the best at like uh, being able to sync up, as you said, with the the with the what you're saying, what the salespeople are talking to customers about, and what marketing are producing and stuff. Sometimes a little bit out of sync there. Uh, so anything that can help to, and especially anything that can help align and keep both of those organizations more on track. Uh, because we've heard a lot about AI, you know, in marketing, but I think it's the AI in the in the sales and marketing alignment part is even more interesting. Yeah, yeah. So on that, like on that point, that 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 story I just went through with you. Um, I've been part of billion dollar corporations where mm -hmm. you know hired outside consultants and spent like a hundred thousand dollars or whatever on them. Yeah. Right? That's a one time thing. You do it, maybe you revisit once a year, but it's not a living process. Mm -hmm. Um, here now you can commoditize what I just shared with you down to the a small business and they can start incorporating that into their small business and augmenting. So they may not even have had a marketing person full time. I mean, you would need a, a team just to do what I just shared with you. Yeah. But now you're, you're not replacing anyone, but you're completely accelerating and augmenting your business processes now. Mm -hmm. Um, so. And then what are, what are some of the, what are some of the, where, where's a good place to start? Cause I always think that that's what a lot of people struggle with in organizations is big or small is they say, okay, I see all of this, you know, AI, I see there's all these things happening. We need to get on this. We need to get on the digital transformation, the automation, but they don't know where to start. And I think that's the part. And that's where they end up giving a load of money to some outside company to figure it out for them. Yeah. So have you, um, are you familiar with the concept of an, of an AI agent? Have you heard yeah, that term? Yes. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you even been playing around with it? So like even as an example, ChatGPT, you can start creating your own GPTs now and things like yeah, that. Yeah, no, we have, we have played around with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's a great place to, to start. Um, uh, and, and basically starting small with something that you think can be of value internally to your organization. It could be a sales process to help your SDRs or your sales mm -hmm. reps and so forth. Um, starting with just a, like a playbook to better surface, to create some structure around your marketing activities and your, and your sales activities. But there's like so many different places to do it. Um, in, in our own company right now within Knowledge.ai, we're exposing more and more of that functionality within the platform to help you create your own AI agents mm -hmm. to help you in business processes. And I think that's one thing that people don't, uh, again, I, th I think not everybody understands right now because they think... Uh, uh, you know, there there's worries about security and getting all of this sort of stuff. They don't realize the, the efficacy of actually using, you know, using an agent or using uh, using it with your own internal database, your own secure internal databases, and then using, you know, uh, using natural language querying and that uh, to be able to unlock that. So I think that's a part that I don't think everybody understands that you don't have to disappear out to the cloud. You can be very secure by using, by using AI to unlock your internal data. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great point. So let me, let me roll back a little bit. Yep. I am highly encouraging everyone, every business to be, to make a concerted effort to see how they can adopt AI in their business. Mm -hmm. And I'm what, I'm, what I'm telling everybody is if you're not doing that, in two years, you may be out of business. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so this, this wave, this revolution is, is, is incredible and it's, and it's happening right now. And if you're not actively doing it, you, you need to be doing it. Um, what's important to understand is, is if you log into ChatGPT as an example, but there's plenty of others out there and the industry, like daily, there's new competitors yeah. coming out and you're going to hear all the time, oh, there's some, this is better, that's better. You know, pick one, stick with it and, and learn it well. 
Um, but when you use ChatGPT as a consumer, you're, in my opinion, you're using almost like a demo version of the product. Yeah. Um, you're using like the general somebody that knows like ChatGPT is a product where it's it's decent at a lot of different things, but not really good at one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's where agents come in. So where agents come in is the ability for you as a business to customize ChatGPT or some other system like that specifically to your business model. Um, so if I was in the business where I was writing a lot of RFP responses, I would be creating an agent and uploading it to your point regarding your own secure personal data. I would be uploading it a bunch of my best RFP responses. And then I would be having it auto generate and auto respond to RFPs. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Accenture's and I mean, I'm in the DC space, so a lot of government contractors, but I'm sure all, if they're not, they're, 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 they're behind the times. I'm sure they're all using AI agents now to automatically write RFP responses. Um, yeah. And those, and those are really good, like simple, uh, not saying it's simple to do, but you know, good practical examples about things that are extremely time consuming that AI is actually better at than, than, than humans, as you said, I mean, being able to, 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 to look at all the responses and to be able to create the best version of it, or even versions of it, depending on the circumstances. Uh, but I think also, I think people are maybe a little bit, uh, overwhelmed or intimidated by, uh, you know, by using it, by building something to use internally. But as you said, I mean, it's not that, it's not that difficult to do it, you know, if you start small. Yeah. I, I, here's an example. I'm on my local town's planning and, and zoning commission. Mm -hmm. So we meet once a month and we review, you know, uh, requests and applications and things like that. There are hundreds of ordinances. I'm not an expert on it, on any of them. Um, but I, I, I created an agent. I uploaded all of our town's ordinances and zoning and all planning documents and so forth. And it's astounding. So now when a person comes in front of the board and they have an application, I feed that into our, my planning and zoning agent and it comes back and it just, it's absolutely incredible. It's, it's like, it was a, an expert and it is an expert now on our local town's ordinances. Wow. That's a, that's a very, it sounds, it may sound complicated to other people. It's a very simple thing to do. Yeah, and it sounds fantastic because if anybody ever looked at ordinances or anything like that, you know, you lose the will to live very quickly in okay. looking at those documents. So anything that can help you with that is a good thing. Um, what are some of the what are some of the challenges, though? I, I see like, uh, you know, executives and, and sales leadership and stuff, you know, they're, as I said, I mean, they're hearing all about this stuff. They're hearing all these, you know, wild predictions about what AI is going to do and all of that. How do they, how, how should they be approaching it to make sure that they get the best out of it while keeping their sales teams like motivated and showing them the value of these tools as opposed to the fear factor? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. I, I, I like using a saying, which is crawl, walk, run. You know, take things small and, and simple and just start with that. Um, I've, I've been hearing a lot of like using AI to uh, score your pipeline as an example, mm -hmm. right? I'm a little skeptical on that. Um, I think there's a lot of what I can, there's a lot of structured data in a pipeline, you know, like how many days and on opportunities, yeah. uh, you know, that's relative, that's been out there for 20 years, the ability to automate, you know, create an AI to score a pipeline, but there's so much more unstructured information behind a pipeline. Um, so I'm a little I, like Salesforce with their Salesforce Einstein capability that, you know, they're saying that they can start doing things like that. Maybe they can. I just think it's going to take so much effort to have a good AI to score a pipeline or start projecting on or things like that. I think it's an opportunity just to say, OK, um, let's go back to the playbook as an example. Mm -hmm. You have a playbook. You can use AI to help generate the playbook. The next next thing from there is let's add marketing content into that playbook, case studies white papers, mm -hmm. et cetera. And now when your sales rep is having a meeting, ha um, you can start automatically recommending to the sales rep, the most relevant content. The agent can start recommending content um, from your marketing team relative to the meeting you're about to have. That's a very simple thing to get up and running. Yeah, not just simple to get up and running, but it also means that you have a certain amount of uh, consistency then. Because uh, at the same point in the sales process, at the right time, ideally, the majority of the stuff that you're sharing should be consistent, regardless of who the rep is and who the opportunity is. And I think that's the thing that we all constantly, you know, have struggled with over the years is that is that consistency and often people working off of even working off of outdated and old documents and stuff like that. A lot of this removes that. 
Yeah, you're spot on, John. So you've been marketing for a while, right? And, and <laughs> you, create, you create some great marketing content. Um, I've been in sales for a while. And that there's when I'm on a pipeline call with a sale, my sales team, and we're closing a half million dollar deal with a health with a hospital on the West Coast. And I asked the sales rep, did you leverage the case study of the <laughs> of the half million dollar deal we closed on the East Coast, you know, six months ago? And they said, what case study? Yeah. Um, and it just drives me nuts. And I'm like, the case study I, I asked you to read, you know, but I understand they're busy, right? Yep. And the older I get, the, the more I start forgetting things. Um, so that's a gr it's just an excellent use case of AI just to automatically recommend relevant content at the right time to the right person. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and it helps you with, you know, maintaining, you know, version control and all that kind of stuff, because uh, something worse than two people sending the same, sending the, a, a version of the same document to two different customers and one having up to date information and the other having outdated information, which normally leads to problems. Where do you see this? Where do you see Nick? Where do you see the next frontier for for AI and sales? What do you think is coming? Yeah, so that's where it gets scary, right? So that's <laughs> where that's where we transition from augmented to artificial, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I I think the first frontier on that will be like fully automated SDRs. Mm. Um, so let's let's roll back again to that playbook example I was telling you. You have to, if you create a playbook and it's really it's it's really goes in detail. Here are here are our ideal customers, personas, pain points, um, objection handling, all that typical stuff that you would see in a playbook, right? If you now have an AI bot that can make phone calls and generate emails and respond, that gets really scary. And I know that there are startups that are working on that right now. They're prototyping it. And uh, I, I would imagine that within the next 12 months, you will be getting calls from people that you will have no idea is a is a robot. Um, do you? I need just to ask you on that note. Do you think that there is a? Do you think that there is a transparency and ethical issue or anything there? I mean, do do you think we have the right to know whether we are dealing with a human being or whether we're dealing with something that's that's uh, artificial? Because I, I personally do. I, I honestly think I should I should have the right to know whether I'm uh, communicating with a human or not. Yeah. Um... Are you familiar with the term uncanny valley? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a term. It's it's been in the in the space now for a while. It's it's a it's in the artificial artificial intelligence world, and um, it's it's when you are in conversation with a robot and you don't know, but then you find out. You it's almost it's this horrible reaction, obviously, that you would have, right? Right. Um, and so. Um, a lot of companies get around that, so you might be seeing it now in airports or or automated systems, they intentionally make the system look sound artificial. Mm. And so that's called that's called the uncanny valley because you never want to piss off your customers, right? Yeah, yeah. But that but however, um, I think the technology will get so good that you will be getting calls from SDRs and sales reps um, and on customer support calls and you will not know it. Um, and and it's uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that's going to happen. And, and maybe, you know, our government needs to pass laws and regulations that say that's illegal. Um, but I can tell you, like on LinkedIn right now, um, you would probably be astounded how many people on LinkedIn are reaching out to you, and um, they're they're fake. Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't be surprised at all, actually, because uh, it, there's, it, if anything, the the people who like to spam are the tend to be the most. Uh, you know, they latch onto these technologies immediately and find a way of of doing everything at scale, regardless of whether that's a good thing or not. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the the, the future is 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 scary. Hopefully, our government will will create rules and regulations around it to try and protect it. That doesn't mean that, you know anybody outside this country could could still do it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those things that if you're not if you and your company are not embracing it and trying to get ahead of the curve, you're going to be so far. And I say you, I mean I'm talking about like every company. Whether you're an HVAC company um, or you're a consulting company, it's it's one of those things that take a concerted effort to start looking at how to adopt AI into your daily process. And I guess just the one last point is, and it's often, I mean, when you just mentioned the, the HVAC company or whatever, it's often these um, smaller businesses now. This gives a fantastic opportunity. This is a great in some ways, like because they can, they're more nimble, you know, more flexible. They can adapt to things faster. 
it um, I mean, AI could give great advantages to small or medium sized companies, even over the larger, the enterprise ones that are like turning the Titanic, you know, uh, sometimes. So, I mean, this this is one of those revolutions that can probably uh, impact and help you know smaller medium-sized businesses even faster than larger companies somewhat you're yeah you're absolutely right and that's that's where for my own company for knowledge that i was that's where our our biggest growth curve right now is in the smb space um, mm -hmm. real quick to adopt and and even from a like a top of funnel perspective we leverage a lot of ai to help generate more leads for for companies and um what you know they they, they don't they don't they don't have the expertise or the or the you know the experience to to know how to do proper lead generation. Yeah. And leveraging AI, we can accelerate that and we can you know significantly grow their pipeline now. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's very it's very exciting, especially for um, you know if you're starting a company now. I mean, think of like how the world has changed. You can leverage AI. You can leverage upwork and you know contract people from all over the globe with you know all the skill sets that you need you don't even need to hire full-time people if you don't want to i mean there's a there's a it really is i mean there's so many things you can use now to get your business started and to scale it in a way that you could never do before yeah yeah i mean you know i remember the days when you know on your on the phone book you wanted to be uh start with the letter a right <laughs> And now it's just so different nowadays, and it's gonna it's gonna just be so different a couple of years from now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Nick, this is fascinating stuff. All of Nick's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and KnowledgeNet.ai. Sure. So, um, uh, yeah. So, I I'm the chief revenue officer. I'm also the chief product officer of KnowledgeNet.ai. We're a real, real fun startup company that's all about trying to leverage AI to help grow your business. So I uh, appreciate the time, John, to speak with you and, and happy to work with anybody that's interested in talking, reaching out to us. Yeah, absolutely. I would uh, encourage you to go check it out. As we said at the beginning, if you're not looking at AI right now, I don't know, you must be in a very uh, insulated business sector that I don't know about. Um, but otherwise, you know, you need to be on this and particularly, you know, on it for sales and marketing, because, you know, that's where a lot of the innovation is taking place right now. So uh, go check out uh, knowledgenet.ai. And thank you again, Nick. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you all again soon.